Nate Kern, welcome back. It's good to see you again. Good to see all y'all too. Thank you. It was really fun having you out at Virginia International Raceway for Lightning Lap. How did you introduce yourself to somebody who doesn't know anything about motorcycles or motorcycle racing? I definitely introduced myself as that beyond grateful, um, just truly an understatement. I'm the 0.001% that ever gets a chance to, to, you know, even let alone ride motorcycles, but race them. Um, it was never a dream. It was never honestly a passion. It just kind of happened. I won't get too evangelical, but uh, truly I, I'm just a bottom up guy that didn't come from a racing family and uh, didn't come from money, but for some reason, um, it's it's been uh, hard to believe I've made a career out of it. It's a bashful way of saying pro racer, BMW ambassador, and a factory test rider for BMW, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's great. So we showed up to VIR with the BMW uh, M1000RR. Walk us through this motorcycle. Well, I can tell you right off the bat, uh, I'm so proud that um, since the inception of BMW's first sport bike, um, true uh, sport bike in 2010 with the S1000 double R, um, I'm glad that the M um, branding was not, you know, given previous to this motorcycle because we really truly have the performance now. And it, it's, it's definitely has the synergies, full synergies with, uh, you know, the M cars in regards to truly um, I like to sum it up by just saying the M1000 double R and any of the M cars, it just takes longer to run out of skill on, on our, our products. And there's, there's a lot you can do with this bike too. Cause you know, the quick specs that I found, you know, 205 horsepower, right. Top speed, just under 190, 189. I did the quick math on the power to weight, uh, 2.06 pounds per horsepower, uh, with, with a fully fueled bike. That's insanity. Like you're, you know, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely, um, if you have a level head for sure, you're like, that's insanity with the numbers. But when it comes down to the rideability and the versatility from rain mode, all the way up to our adjustable pro riding modes, which um, are the same analogy as the M modes, you know, to be able to a la carte the menu, what you want in regards to horsepower, throttle response. Um, I'll tell you the heart and soul of the M1000 double R that also came from the S1000 double R is under the seat and it's not very highlighted. And that is the six axis lean angle sensor. We literally have all six axes covered in regards to, um, you know, traction control, uh, throttle, lean angle. Um, basically, it's taking four calculations, it's taking throttle percentage, brake percentage, lean angle from the lean angle sensor, and then shock travel from the potentiometer. And this all comes stock from the factory. And really all that fancy talk means that, is that you can, we've pre-calibrated the M1000 double R for so many environments, so many skill sets. It's obviously wherever you dial it in based off of your environment and your skill set. Um, I can just tell you in rain mode, if you fall off, you should really rethink riding. It's so cheating. So with all that in mind, all the sophistication in this bike, you're showing up at VIR. You've, you've spent some time at VIR. I see the track map on the wall in the, uh, behind you. Have you ever done the grand course before? I've never done the grand course. I've been beyond fortunate to have some of the greatest days of my life. Literally, I get a little emotional when I think about it. Uh, um, VIR, I was able to, uh, to do my first race um, ever there in 2002. And um, very late, honestly, considering what folks feel I've, I've achieved. Um, I was 24 years old and uh, in the regional pro series, which was championship cup series. Um, so I did one weekend um, there, uh, got bumped up to regional pro, um, honestly, my second weekend ever racing because um, we gained so many points at Daytona in our first weekend racing as an amateur. And uh, truly the the fear, I remember just, you know, feeling like, well, it's my first time here and oh my goodness, what do I do? And honestly, no concessions. Um, they bumped me up considering I passed the points that usually it takes a season to get. We did in one weekend and now I got, you know, 40 pissed off experts, you know, pro regional pro riders out there knowing I'm getting bumped up and we put white duct tape over our number plates. So, uh, to sit on the, on, on the front row, um, at VIR, the first time I'd ever even been to that track. And uh, we finished second in our first race and won the second race. And then that was it. The butterflies went away. But I just wanted to give you that quick example of just how 
truly um, VIR from uh, the from the cleaning staff, the 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 lodge staff, the the front office, all the way up to Connie, the security. It's just it was like a second home and a second family. Yeah, that's why we're happy to keep coming back there every year for this event. Yep. You're, you're showing up now with a group of you know the latest and greatest sports cars. How are you thinking you're going to stack up between them? Well, you know, once I got on site, I didn't, and I'm, I'm not one to really do too much research ahead of time. I don't like things renting space in my head. I wanted to, A, number one, really keep it fun. Um, and I was having such a good time that it was hard to tap into that mindset of, hey, you know, let's put in a lightning lap. Um, but I definitely took in the, the elements and uh, being late in the year, um, being pretty far north, if you ask me. Um, and knowing that there was a public, uh, car track day the day before. So I just took in all those, um, again, not as concessions, but as re realistic elements to, um, asphalt temperature, how dirty is the asphalt, what type of rubber was put down, um, what that, what, what, what I know the compounds, you know, whether it's street tires, track tires, um, the point is those are things that you have to not be oblivious to. Um, but just seeing the cars and seeing the amount of wings, a lot of wings, man, there's just wings everywhere, dude. <laughs> but we showed up with our own wings and uh, the M1000 double R uh, generates quite a bit of downforce at, at, at top ends. I mean, we're looking upwards of 60 pounds of downforce on the front end. So um, I was comparing wings, <laughs> but uh, no, it was really neat to see cars that, that, that uh, the technology is just amazing and this, the sexiness and a lot of some of the V8s that were still around were, were really, you know, um, that's just in my blood. You know, it's uh, it's hard to get the redneck out of me at times, but uh, I will say uh, it was really impressive to just see the lineup and the price points of the cars, but the performance, I mean, there's some really neat cars out there that, that are affordable that you can still, you know, blow your skirt up. So we're starting the fastest lap coming out of the last corner, hog pen onto the front straight. How are you feeling right now? Feeling good. We're clicking through the gearbox, lining up the kink, third, fourth, fifth, and then we short shift into sixth gear because as you lean over on the small part of the tire, the RPMs go up. And for the elements on this day, um, I had the traction control turned down pretty low. I was maybe two increments from fully off. So I wanted to, some positive wheel slip to help me rotate the bike um, into some of the later apexes. But uh, you can see exiting turn three, which is pretty famous there. Turn four, um, it's a slow turn. So you need to, you actually need to go slow in it to line up five, six. So I short shift second to third gear here, not to let the electronics work too hard and uh, not to spin the tire too hard. But when you're working with 205 horsepower um, and a leader bike torque that comes on at 5,500 RPMs, we're able to achieve maximum RPM so many times per lap, which is 15,100 RPMs. So accelerating uh, through the S's there is exciting because the bikes never race that. And there's a lot of gyroscopic effects. So it's very physical when you keep the, the throttle, um, let's say 80% and above. Coming out of the oak tree, Awesome, second gear, third gear at 15.1, fourth gear at 15.1, fifth gear. And uh, you can see it was right at 168, 169. And uh, braking, to me, is the most exciting part of riding, personally. The acceleration tends to, um, I wouldn't say get redundant, but you know, 190 doesn't, it feels like 150 anymore. Um, so this is a fun section on the south course. Um, you can apex a little early on some of these right here. It seems like I apexed early, but there's so much track to track out all the way out to the rumble strip. This is the section of the track that took me a little bit to learn. Um, I enjoy learning new tracks, uh, new sections. I've been to VIR quite a bit, but I've never connected with the grand course. So just trying to keep something through the drivetrain through there while I'm trying to search for reference points. Um, reference points are, are critical because at, at this speed, there's no guessing and hoping it's not really a good option. So I like to find, you know, tar snakes, cracks in the asphalt, colors of the rumble strip. Um, now we're coming up to the infamous, um, you know, uh, roller coaster. And this is 
second gear, I like to use the engine braking. We have three levels of engine braking. I had it turned up to maximum. Instead of trail braking, I'd rather use the engine braking to pull gyroscopically the, the deceleration of the crank to pull the bike down into the corner. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and right here in sixth, it'll actually spin the tire from the kink all the way to the fifth brake, a uh, little to fifth, four and a half brake marker. I, I love the idea of one short shifting into sixth and still fighting wheel spin at a buck 60 on the front straight. Yeah. It, it, and, and that's the beauty of the machine. It's so versatile to, to have that ability to do that due to the elements being good enough and having the understanding that it's okay. I mean, if it doesn't spit you off, just keep doing it. That's my, always been my philosophy, but um, it's really exciting. The confidence that the chassis that the whole platform gives you. And that's why it's been the number one selling sport bike, not really due to horsepower and looks it's due to the confidence. Um, the bike just laughs at you. It's so stable. Yeah. It gives you that. Uh, it sounds like it gives you that confidence to do that wheel spin at 160 every single lap. Right. Cause we, we could see the spot on the front straight that you were going by consistently every single time. And, uh, I don't know. It seems like most bikes that would terrify somebody, but when you have the confidence in the software to get you through that, that's what allows it to happen. Uh, correct. But also I know how it's going to activate and deactivate and in, in so many laps and testing so many, literally thousands of laps and testing in Spain over the years to get this motorcycle to that point that, that again, I, I, I can honestly admit, um, regardless if I started late in this career, um, late in riding, uh, I, I have to work harder than other riders at the national level and, and even racing at the international level. And I truly embrace, um, the, the, not just the rider aids, but I embrace how much work and time and efforts put into making this good enough for all skill sets. So it does help me, um, quite a bit, but, uh, you know, one of your, one of your colleagues there at the track had, had an interesting question and they basically were like, dude, so where do you break for turn one? And I, I don't know. I mean, all I could think of was just where the black stripe ends. Right. That's, that's so great. I love to, uh, we didn't get a rear facing point of view camera on your fast run, uh, but we have some footage of that from an earlier run. It was really cool to see you moving around the bike. It's so much more physically demanding those braking zones where you're dropping your inside leg out to help turn the bike in. Is that right? Yes, sir. And that, that primarily there's four functions naturally you know, that, you know, the goat, the greatest of all time, Valentino Rossi started that. And it seemed like a fad thing or just something if Rossi doesn't, then we should do it. But there's, there's really multiple functions to it. I can't uh, optimize uh, a lot of those functions. Um, but I will tell you, uh, I tend to always use my right leg and it's always in the heaviest brake zones from the highest speeds because as you take your foot off the peg, if you keep your legs perfectly straight, there's not a lot of wind drag. But when you turn it sideways and you get that thigh and the calf and the boot, um, I can drop 200 to upwards of 250 RPM. Um, so it's it's a wind break actually. And it helps just, just a little um, bring the brake marker just a, a, maybe a, a hint later. But, uh, um, you know, others use it as counterbalances, uh, feelers, whatever, but that's, that's what I do. And I always use my right leg cause I'm getting, you know, downshifts out, um, on the left. That's so cool. That's so cool. And your resulting time, two minutes and 43 seconds. I mean, just for context, um, that's a, a 10th of a second faster than the Porsche 918 spider was in 2016. Um, and it's, it's right on the heels of the, uh, Porsche 911 GT3 RS that we lapped uh, a couple of years back. So this is like incredible territory, you know, incredibly uh, well, fast territory. Hmm. Well, I will tell you, I had the heated grips on in the morning. <laughs> so, you know, to have all these street features and to be able to turn that lap time, I mean, literally like to, 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 to go in through the stock parameters that I have to play within a box and be able to say, okay, this is VIR. Here's the tires. Here's this. Um, you know, this is a customer bike off the showroom floor and to be able to literally go into my pro riding modes and adjust my throttle response, uh, wheelie control, which I turned off, um, just, to, just, you know, not that it's too intrusive, but really didn't need it. Um, but if it was windy, absolutely. I could actually turn of our four levels of wheelie control, uh, when the front end comes off the ground and, and you get a side wind that goes into the fairing, it will literally set the bike over depending on how much wind there is. And when it sets down, out of line with your rear tire, um, full throttle, which not a lot of weight on the bike. So, or on the nose. So 
these are all really cool things that stock you can dial in. And I know we're talking one extreme of the spectrum, which is in a controlled environment, um, really turning a lot of stuff down. But man, in the real world, for me to go out on the street, I live in North Georgia. I don't ride much on the street anymore, but this bike has made me want to because of so much electronic aid and uh, the, just the forgiveness. That's really cool. Thank you for coming out, showing us what the bike can do. Thank you for walking us through the lap time. And also, I'm sure Tony wants to thank you for giving him a ride around the track too. <laughs> you know, we happen to have, we were coming from another event at Barber Motorsports Park. And, and I'll tell you, we had our, our 2023 S1000 RR. We have a custom handle on the gas tank. So it's built in for two uprides. So we had the gear and I offered it. And uh, Tony is definitely the right size. And uh, just said, hey, would you like to go for a little cruise around VIR? And man, to hear him <laughs> through through my helmet, um, it was just a lot of fun. But we did. I mean, once I knew we had the trust in each other, when we went through the kink on the second second pass, uh, I mean, that was flat out in fifth gear. So we're we we're at the low one fifties. Yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity to bring him into our world. Well, thanks again. It was awesome to see, and maybe we'll have you out next year with something spicier. Awesome, man. Thank you very Smart. much. See, thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's the nickel tour. That was the nickel tour. <laughs> I, I have no nickel idea tour. how you do this. That's the nickel tour. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was crazy. Yeah, it was good. <laughs>